I'm Stephen Hillier, and I am the director of the Erwin S. Channon School of Architecture Archive. One of the two things I brought were um, samples of our uh, Joseph Covino New York City postcard collection, um, which is about 3,700 postcards, all centric to New York City. Uh, they were donated to us by Joe Covino, who was a private collector um, in the late 90s, early 2000s. This is uh, Penn Station, the former Penn Station. And then this postcard of City Hall with the unexplained uh, <laughs> flying. flying car overhead, uh, which we just love. And then here is an interesting one, which is a design for a New York City courthouse. Um, this was designed by architect Guy Lowell. Um, and this was actually not built. Um, it was delayed due to World War I. Um, a subsequent redesign of the building by the same architect is now the New York City Supreme Court building downtown. So for us, you know, these are gems, each and every one of them. Um, there's, there's almost 4,000 of them. Um, they are known to our students in a, a small way and to our faculty, but this is our first effort to now digitize, catalog, and disseminate. These are documents that came to light when we moved from Hewitt to 51 and now we're in the foundation building. We came across John Haydock's handwritten notes for the nine square grid problem. It's essentially a, an architectonics or a first year design problem um, where you take a nine square grid and you introduce basic architectural elements. And it's a, a very kind of clear path to teaching students who don't have any understanding of architectural vocabulary how to think spatially, how to draw spatially. And it's become, um, it became an influential pedagogical uh, problem uh, over the years and it's still practiced to this day and we're talking late 1950s, early 1960s and these are literally his notes that explain um, the problem itself in his calligraphic handwriting uh, as well as um, basic diagrams that break down the different architectural um, iterations that might take place within this program. So for us, you know, and a ton of what we have in our student work collection in terms of student projects are actually nine square grid projects. So to have the original document is just mind boggling. I'm Carol Salomon, archives librarian and director of the Cooper Union Library. The archives began as a gift. The nucleus of the Cooper archives came to us from Erskine Hewitt, who was the last of Peter Cooper's grandchildren to pass away. And he died in 1938. And shortly after that, his nephew transferred about 50,000 documents and books and manuscripts and photographs to Cooper Union, and that became the basis of the, the Cooper archives. Since then, we've been collecting school publications and papers and um, you know, trying to keep up with, with the output of the school, which is impossible. <laughs> I had mentioned the gift from Marilyn Hoffner and her husband. One of the fascinating things was this Cooper Graduation Medal from 1904 that was awarded to Daisy Brown, who was the, uh, the first black female engineering graduate from Cooper Union. Hi, my name is Alexander Tuchlovsky. I am the associate professor here at the Cooper Union, and I'm also the curator in the Herbal Ballin Study Center of Design Typography. The Herbal Balance Study Center of Design and Typography was founded in 1985 uh, around the collection of Herbal Balin and his uh, associates' work. Uh, it's, the, it's the gift of material that came to Cooper Union to create a study center around that material, and it's grown over the last 30 years to include lots of other famous designers as well. This is a fairly uh, obscure in a way or a very very rare uh, artifact. So what this is, this is um, a mailer, a uh, direct mailer of a pharmaceutical sample sent out to doctors. 
This is a sample uh, sent out from Geigy uh, in 1964. And this is the typical kind of packaging from that period, uh, especially from this company. The, the Geige had an immense uh, graphic design program and is probably one of the most important uh, corporate design systems that was created in the 50s and 60s. An incredible marker of, of Swiss modernism. They found a very efficient way of presenting very complex information and, and their mode essentially was, was rooted in the idea of objectivism. But I think like, what's really interesting is that the role the institution has played, uh, and it's very obvious within the three collections, like the, the significant, obviously, the, the, the common denominator is Cooper Union, but it's really interesting to see how pivotal Cooper Union has been. That thread through the three collections I think is very, very obvious, and the, the influence that they have had on not just New York City, but the, but the world in many ways. So we're, we're just trying to keep that, keep that legacy alive.